Welcome to Theater Appreciation um, Online for June of 2021 at Motlow State Community College. You could have chosen art or music, um, but you chose theater and I'm glad you did. Welcome. This is me, Professor Emily Seal, uh, with my little family. Uh, that's my son, Elliot, and my husband, Davis. He also works at Motlow. Uh, we're there at the top of Suwannee Mountain. Uh, I'm originally from Cowan, Tennessee, at the foot of Suwannee Mountain, so it's kind of a special area for me, sentimentally. Uh, it's a weird time to be taking theater, <laughs> since uh, so many theaters are still shut down, including Broadway in New York City, probably our most famous of all the theater districts. Uh, Broadway is currently not operating, although a lot of New York City has opened back up. There, People are eating in restaurants in New York City, but the, the stage is still taking some time to get back to work. So um, unfortunately, a lot of stages here in Tennessee are also uh, still closed. So I, uh, a big component of this course is seeing a play um, and traditionally in this course, that's been something you do live. Uh, through the student offices, we would all go see TPAC and uh, watch a big box office musical together, and then you would go away and write a critique. But in this quarantine time, we are asking that you watch a uh, recorded video. Now, if you have a local community theater who's do, putting on a play and you'd rather go see a live theater event, uh, I think Cumberland County, County Playhouse is doing Drive Miss Daisy. Um, South Jackson is doing a Broadway review. There are a few things here and there that you could possibly go see, but it's just going to um, be a little more difficult while everything is opening back up because of COVID-19. So uh, if you would rather take kind of the easy route and, and watch a movie uh, or the safer route for some of you who may not be um, in a place where you feel comfortable in crowds and things. Um, the theater is no stranger to illness. Uh, Shakespeare wrote his best sonnets during the plague. Uh, one of my favorite musicals, Into the Woods, you can see I have a picture up there at the top uh, with Anna Kendrick and Emily Blunt. Uh, that musical was written by Stephen Sondheim during the AIDS pandemic uh, and he of course is a gay man um, living through that lost so many people that he loved and it was a horrible horrible time and he wrote that musical as a reaction you know the first half of the play sort of ends in a happy ever after and the second part of the play uh, opens and like half the cast has died and so it's really about everybody dealing with that loss and um, it's like a lot of Stephen Sondheim's plays, deep and meaningful. But uh, so there's a lot of great art out there about <laughs> illnesses and pandemics. The theater is no stranger to pandemic and I hope um, we'll come back stronger and bigger than ever. I know personally, I am looking forward to directing two plays in the fall after a year and a half of not being able to produce theater. So I'm very excited for a reopening, but not quite yet. Uh, so your assignment, you'll hear me speak in the lectures. I recorded these lectures pre-quarantine, pre-COVID. Um, you'll hear me talk about going to see a live play and the importance of seeing a live play. And of course it's important, but it's not as important as your health. So um, we are uh, giving you the option. You can go to the lib guides. There's more information about that on the syllabus. Uh, go to the lib guides to watch that that uh, play. You can choose whichever one you like. There is um, Shrek on Netflix. Uh, Shrek the musical, of course, not just the animated feature. It needs to be recorded in front of a live audience. So Hamilton on Disney Plus is also recorded in front of a live audience. And if you go to that lib guide, you'll see lists of different things that are available through the library website for you to watch. Now that's the big cumulative assignment at the very end of the semester. So just wanted to acknowledge up here on the front end that it is a weird, weird time to take a theater class, but I'm glad you're here and the principles are the same and theater will live on after this pandemic. 
So I hope that you have a plan to succeed. I hope that you are setting your mind and your intention. I hope you're carving out a little bit of time uh, to make sure you're meeting these deadlines, right? It's different in an online course for those of you who are new to online courses because I'm not there to hold your hand. I'm not there to remind you. You really have to be intentional and put it in your mind's eye that you're going to keep up with the class and that you're going to decide to do the work. Um, so I uh, have that calendar and it's really a pretty fast pace for this class. We have an assignment due almost every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, um, you know, make sure that even though the class uh, deadlines don't start until Friday, that you are getting the book, that you are putting it, all of these on some sort of reminder or calendar, uh, that you are setting your intentions to do the best that you can in this class. Uh, some people mistakenly think, oh, well, this is just an arts uh, required elective. I, it's not going to be that hard. And while it may not be your hardest class, uh, it's still a college level, level course. You still have to write two papers. It still um, have an intensity to it. So please make sure that you're taking it seriously and in got your head in the right space. As Aristotle says, well begun is half done. <laughs> uh, uh, this is me definitely confessing to you that I have been the student who says they're just going to wing it. Um, you know, I'm just going to take a good old college try, as they say. Please don't do that. Please don't wait to the last second. Please, uh, as exhilarating as it may be, uh, your, your brain needs time to wrap its head around content. So I would really encourage you, if you can, to stay ahead of the schedule, right? Um, you know, everything for this entire course is open on the very first day. If you were super ambitious, you could finish this whole class in a week. I'm not saying you have to do that. Please pace yourself. Please take your time. Um, but life happens. And especially in these fast paced courses, you know, just for the month of June, um, you know, one little stomach flu and you're three days behind, right? And then it feels impossible and you feel like you can never catch up. So just encouraging you, and I, I'm not trying to condescend. Some of you are pros at this college thing. You've been doing it. Maybe this is your last class in your college career. Uh, not trying to condescend. Just the, the things that I see over and over from students is that once they get behind, it's really hard for them to catch back up. So I want you to do well. Can I say that again? I want you to do well. And so please keep the lines of communication open, um, but please make it an, an effort, a concerted effort to meet your deadlines. So we have two texts for this class. Uh, the textbook, uh, you can find out information about our textbook through our um, textbook provider for Motlow. And um, there are different availabilities of the textbook. You can either, uh, you know, borrow it on a digital format or a hardbound copy. But again, um, all of that information is available through Follett, our Motlow bookstore provider. Uh, please don't ask me about textbooks. It's an ever-changing thing and the availability and the um, inventory is not my area of expertise, right? I'm the content specialist, I'm the educator, I am not the bookstore representative. And so as frustrating as um, sometimes acquiring a book can be, please just know it's not my area, uh, the inventory. So uh, 10th edi edition of The Lively Art. And then we have um, a play script that uh, you'll be required to read and write a midterm paper over, and that is The Piano Lesson by the great August Wilson. Uh, you may recognize August Wilson's name. He's uh, one of the greatest playwrights of the 20th century, American playwright, African-American playwright. He wrote uh, Fences, which was a movie with Denzel Washington. Uh, more recently, Ma Rainey's Black Body, uh, sorry, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom with uh, Viola Davis and uh, Chadwick Boseman, um, you know, won a lot of Academy Awards. Uh, he is a 
prolific writer with deep and meaningful insights. And so that will be our play script that you're required to get. And the play script is, uh, I think, like eight bucks or something. It's not nearly as um, costly as the textbook. So, okay. So just giving you a heads up. I have pet peeves, right? I am a human. <laughs> and one of my pet peeves is when people apologize because they're not artistic or they're not creative. Um, I really believe to be human is to be creative, uh, that it's part of the genetic map for all human beings. And it's a deep and meaningful thing to create. It's one of my life tenets um, to create and produce more than I consume, to um, make the world beautiful with art and with theater. And so um, I understand that artistic skills are just like any other muscle you have to lift in order to get swole, right? <laughs> uh, you have to apply yourself and try when it comes to creativity. Um, it's just like your math skills. It's just like your reading or writing skills. Uh, the more that you apply yourself, the more creative you'll be. And really what it means, uh, many of you are just getting a liberal arts degree, whether it be in history or English uh, or or general studies, right? A good old fashioned liberal arts degree says to an employer, this person is a creative problem solver, right? Um, COVID has been horrible and I've, I've lost people and I have been astonishingly hopeful just watching these great minds come up with creative problem solving solutions to these horrible, devastating problems, right? Um, watching the creative sort of visions for the future that people are able to make come to fruition, right? If they didn't have that imagination, if they didn't have uh, the um, foresight to sort of create the world that we want to have, um, then we, without that leadership, we might all just be sitting in our house houses, you know, this time next year waiting for this horrible thing to pass. Um, but great leadership. And I do believe that, that the thinkers, the people who are in college to hone their leadership skills, to be these great leaders are, um, need to tap into their creativity. They need to be able to appreciate other people's creativity and learn from it. The best artists are the best thieves, right? To steal from other people's creativities and uh, then go on to embrace uh, their own imaginings, right? Dreamers of dreams. These are the people who are going to change the world. So, sorry, I put it... I, didn't mean to digress so much with my enthusiasm for creativity. But it's one of the main reasons that a liberal arts degree traditionally contains an arts elective credit, right? Is because we want you to embrace that side of yourself. And maybe this is your first time doing it. And maybe you've never even seen a play before. That's okay. That is okay. Uh, that's why I'm here, is to um, introduce you to more culture. Some of you are probably... Um, been in place before. Maybe you did plays in high school or you did plays in the community theater. Welcome. You are also welcome. I also think you have things to teach each other and to teach me. I'm excited to read on the message boards about your experiences with creativity and your experience with culture. Um, but everyone is welcome. All skill levels, all experience levels are welcome. Um, but when you go on to take a task, right, whether it be uh, creating costume design like the one pictured or um, writing a discussion board post, please don't apologize for not being creative or apologize for your lack of experience in the content area. You're here, you're welcome. And uh, because you are a human being, uh, you have creativity inside you. I wholeheartedly believe that. Okay, I'm gonna step off my soapbox and move to the next slide. All right, let's get into nuts and bolts because I'm sure a lot of you are just thinking about uh, what a, what's this going to cost me? <laughs> what do we got to do here? Uh, there are 11 quizzes. Like I said, our schedule for this June class is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you'll have a quiz uh, almost every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, 
with that, you'll have a discussion question that'll ask you to reflect on the content. So uh, if we're talking about costume design, you'll be asked, uh, you know, for example, what costume have you worn in your life, whether it be in a play or a uniform on the soccer field, what's your favorite costume you've ever worn? Now that attachment to your personal experience hopefully will help you start to engage the content in a way that's meaningful for you, right? All the world's a stage. Uh, you, we're talking about costumes as they relate to the stage, but you know, I just went to the Memphis Zoo. The zookeepers had a quote unquote costume. The created sets around the different exhibits for the zoo um, were beautifully set designed, right? So even though we're talking about these things as they relate to traditional stage, all the world's a stage. And so I encourage you um, to think about how this theater content can help improve your day-to-day -day living. So then you'll write your first midterm paper, which is that uh, character analysis of piano lesson. There'll be an entire lecture over that. I'm asking you to read the book, pick one of the characters and answer a series of questions and prompts related to that character. Now, please know that the character analysis is subjective. How you play the role is different from how someone else is gonna play the role. Please don't rely on internet sources. For your content. This is not a literary research paper. Please don't go on lit charts or spark notes and um, just mimic back to me what they think. I want you to create that character. I want you to think deeply and independently rather than relying on online sources and know that there are a vast number of right answers. This isn't like a math class where we're looking for a specific right answer. If you read the text and your thoughts are based on the text, then there's a good chance that you have a legitimate interpretation. And there's more than one way to portray a character. So that's your midterm paper. Your final paper is that production critique where you go and watch a play and then answer a series of prompts on that. And as I said, you can find productions that you choose to critique uh, on the LibGuides website for Motlow. And there is more information about that on the syllabus. Um, or if you don't want to pick one of the ones that are provided through the website, uh, you need to pick one that has a live audience. So there's tons of stuff on YouTube, some of it legal, some of it not. Uh, like I said, there's Hamilton on Disney Plus. There is Newsies on Broadway, not to be confused with the traditional 90s music, musical Newsies, uh, but if it's performed in front of a live audience, there's Shrek on, on Netflix. I say that it's there right now. <laughs> we all know with streaming services, it's here today, gone tomorrow. So um, if you, uh, there's a discussion question in the discussion post about which musical or, or straight play you're going to pick to write your critique. That's also a great place for you guys to compare notes. And maybe you at first think you're going to pick Hamilton, but then you start it and you're like, Ooh, this is a lot of words. Uh, and then you say, you know what? I, I need something light. Let's just do Shrek, right? Um, don't feel... I love Shakespeare. You'll hear me say it over and over again in this class, how much I love Shakespeare. If Shakespeare is not your thing, please don't make yourself write a paper over a Shakespeare play, right? This is, I give you lots of choice, lots of autonomy because different strokes for different folks. It's not, um, I want you to pick something that you can deeply reflect on and think on. Um, I, I don't even sit around and watch every Hamlet for fun, right? Just because I appreciate the language and things doesn't mean I, I've had students say to me, well, I thought that if I didn't pick a serious piece of art that I wouldn't make an A. Uh, and that's simply not true because I think that there are things to be learned uh, from children's theater. There are things to be learned from happy musicals. There are, of course, things to be learned from Hamlet. And then, like I said, in chapters uh nine and 10, there is a, when we talk about costuming, you have an opportunity to do a costume rendering, uh, a drawing and a creation of a Wizard of Oz character. So more information about that in that module. 
I use that word module. It's a fancy education term, um, just meaning a group of things, right? A group of things. So when I say um, this module's over chapters 10 and 11, I just mean that everything that's in that chapter is due by the due date. So of course you need to read, watch the videos, um, remember, those videos are testable content because, you know, theater is a visual art form. It is a highly tactile experience. It's not something that we can just read about in books. So the videos aren't just FYI. Uh, they're part of the text. They're not just enrichment afterthoughts. They're often the meat of what we're doing, right? Uh, which is part of why I teach theater. I've love TV, right? It's what I do to unwind. It's my favorite time with my family all cuddled up on the couch. Uh, we, um, entertainment for us is stories, right? My stories, my programs. Uh, so those videos are instrumental to understanding the content. And then for every uh, chapter, there's a lecture. You'll hear my voice screen recording, much like we're doing right now. Now, I had a student come to me at the end of the semester and say, I didn't know that the discussions were required. So there is 100 points there that's participation. And that is based on your discussions, right? So I don't give little tiny grades all throughout. I give you one big grade at the end of the semester for your discussion board content. Now you'll notice there are 11 different discussion boards and uh, discussion postings, and there are uh, out of 100 for the entire course. So basically, if you do great on all 11, you can get 100. If you only do five of those, you're probably only gonna get a 50, right? But I'm also looking at, you know, do you use proper grammar? Are you truly reflecting on the text? Uh, I don't require students to reply to two people. Why don't I do that? Because often I, I find that students are just writing because they have to write, right? <laughs> it's just saying, yes, me too, good job, right? And it didn't find it particularly meaningful. Hopefully hearing from each other will give you a deeper reflections on the text. Hopefully you'll teach each other but mandating that you reply to two peoples uh, just created in my mind's eye a lot of uh, busy work. And I'm not about busy work. I want to make sure that you're meaningfully engaging in the class. It's not something just to tick off a list. But um, hopefully the discussion board's an opportunity to, for you to reflect on the material as it might influence your day-to-day -day life. So... Um, once again, you have a midterm paper and a final paper. Between those, you have that costume rendering. So just keep that in your mind that you do have little extra assignments here or there. So, and then take that quiz. Now, some people have asked me uh, why I have my quizzes ending at 3 p.m. instead of 11.59 p.m. Uh, our administration here at Motlow actually asked us to put them during regular business hours because if it's 11.59 p.m., then IT isn't open. D2L help isn't open. No one's there to help you if you have trouble with a quiz. So that's why I have set them at 3 p.m. on those days that they're due. Now, the papers aren't due till 11.59 p.m. because procrastination, I get it, but... Um, I set those deadlines for the quizzes intentionally during the day so that if you do have technical problems, you can get technical assistance. <laughs> so um, there is, I teach speech as well, I teach communication, and there's this phenomenon called firing, which is that it's a lot easier to troll people on the internet when you don't have to make eye contact with them. It's a lot easier to say something in an email to me, to a fellow classmate, on the message board to a fellow classmate that you would never have the guts to say to them um, eye to eye. I say guts. That may, almost makes it sound like a something valor or, you know, please be kind. 
please be respectful to me. Um, sometimes my emails may read over the top um, respectful. And I just do that because it's so difficult in an online environment um, to be understood well, to be understood fully, um, to communicate respect and dignity. It can be very difficult in an email, especially when you're multitasking. I do have a small child and I'm trying to write sometimes uh, while he's right there at my feet. So make sure when you sit down to email me that it's not something that somebody could misinterpret as disrespectful uh, because I take that very seriously. So on the, for example, your first discussion, I do this inside the actor studio questionnaire and it has the question, um, if heaven exists. Now that's a Bernard Pivo questionnaire. It's been around for over a hundred years and I'm just copying those questions. I've had people get very defensive with me um, about that. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say to you at the pearly gates? So it's a hypothetical question. Some people get offended uh, because they're atheist. Other people get offended at me. How dare you say if heaven exists, of course heaven exists. Um, but please know this is a professional environment. I'm not here to get into, uh, to tell you what to think. That's not my job. Uh, my job is to help you cultivate your critical thinking skills and think deeply. Um, I'm not trying to uh, persuade you to think any certain way. Uh, I have, like most Tennesseans, um, some of, I'm not a straight down the ticket anything, right? Uh, uh, I have some convictions that would be described as Democrat, others that would be described as Republican. I am a complicated person and I contain multitudes. If you do have something in the class that offends you or that is um, really, you kind of think that's over the line, please email me. Let's talk about it. Um, and please know that I take those things into consideration and I care. Uh, if you are a dual enrollment student or a younger student, please know this is a college level class and we're going to talk about things that truly matter. And some of the things that truly matter revolve around um, sexuality or violence, uh, but they are still meaningful discussions that help you be introduced to culture, right? Some of the videos available for you to watch your critique over. Some of them are not PG, right? Uh, please know that no one is making you watch anything. You can um, choose a different play, right? That's part of the autonomy of choice. So disclaimers, disclaimers, disclaimers. Uh, I am so glad that you chose to take this class and I truly hope that you're able to uh, meaningfully reflect on theater uh, I think that culture and arts and entertainment bring so much joy to my life. Uh, it is what has gotten me through quarantine, my stories, my movies, uh, TV, um, my favorite entertainers, my favorite music makers, my favorite artists have brought me through a difficult time. And I can't imagine a world without culture. And maybe for you that entertainment is a baseball game. And maybe for you that entertainment is a video game. It's all culture. And it's all something that um, enriches our lives and is creative at its essence. So uh, please know you are welcome, regardless of your experience level, regardless of uh, your... Uh, regardless. <laughs> Got myself all tongue-tied there. Um, but anyway, thank you for for listening. Please know that I'm here for Zoom appointments. I'm here via email. Uh, I want you to do well. So let's do this thing together. As always, thank you for listening. <laughs>